Hey everyone, this is Mary over here at Images on the Page, and today I'm coming with you. Hey everyone, this is Mary over here at Images on the Page, and today I'm coming to you with my July wrap up. Got it. So, I had a pretty ambitious TBR in July, and. I didn't just read eight books, I read 13 books. I I honestly have no idea how that happened. I've been averaging like two books a month and I, I don't know. I don't know. So I'm just going to give you some quick statistics. I read over a total of over 4,000 pages. Um, like I said, I read 13 books, four of the 13 were rereads for me, four of the 13 were audiobooks, four of the 13 were physical copies, and four of the 13 were ebooks. Now that's not to say that some of them couldn't have cross, crossed, well mostly the rereads, um, like I could have reread a book and it be in physical copy or on audiobook, um, cause always if I add all those four up, they're 16 and I didn't read 16. I did have a TBR of eight, and I only read four of the eight, yet somehow still managed to read 13 books. So, yeah, my TBR, I'm awesome at TBRs apparently. No. I'll go first over the rereads because I know at least two of them I've probably talked on my channel before. Um, two of the books I reread this month were Squire and Lady Knight. Um, from the Protector of the Small series by Tamara Pierce, they're the third and fourth respectively. Now, and I, Kel is probably my favorite of her, or the Protector of the Smalls is probably my favorite of her series, um, just because I connect with Kel pretty well, um, and what's really funny about the series as I reread it is, I have this thing where I usually, when I go to reread the series, I don't read it in order, I pick up the third book first. Squire. The third book is my absolute favorite and then because obviously the story is continued in the fourth book I feel the need to keep reading it even though I know how it ends. Um, and then I usually go back and read the first and the second. I know it's a really weird, it's one of my bad reader habits. Um, actually I just really don't care because the third is my favorite. Um, I didn't go back and reread the f first and I didn't go back and reread the um, first and the second this time, though. At least not yet. Um, but yeah, Kel's my favorite. She is trying for her knighthood. It happens, um, her series happens after the Alana series. And it has be been decreed that girls can actually try for their knighthoods. So Kel is the first one to do it. And it's all about the struggle she goes through, like, getting into a male-nominated dom field, all the harassment she has to go through, the bullying, and how she deals with that. And it's just really interesting, especially some of the characters she meets, and I just absolutely love it. One of the other books that I reread um, this month was The Good Thief by James Buchanan. This one is actually, I believe, own voices at least um, for the gay rep. Um, so I, I don't know for sure if he is on voices for the Latinx rep, but, um, he is on voices for the, um, gay rep. And it is probably one of my favorite queer mysteries because, um, it focuses on this thief, um, Caesar, who breaks into houses for a living and he breaks into this person's house and he finds these really horrendous, horrifying pictures. And he, since he's not like an evil person, he decides to turn, basically turn himself in so that he can turn in these pictures. Well, he goes to the only cop he knows, who is Nathan, who he had a one night stand with before he was knowing a cop. So they had a one night stand um, Caesar booked it after finding out he's a cop, and then Nate kind of works in his neighborhood, so they keep bumping into each other. So Caesar goes to Nate for help, and it's just about them 
um, especially Caesar being thrust into this world of like kind of police politics and stuff because it, they find out that the house he broke into was like the police commissioners or the um, one of the higher up police captains houses and so people think that he planted the evidence and stuff so it's about Nathan having to protect Caesar while they get this evidence into trial. And of course, sexiness ensues and some awesome thief stealth. And it's just, it's really good. And they're both very sarcastic and witty. So I definitely love it. The other book I reread or re listened to this month um, was also a mystery. It's called Deeper Than the Dead by Tammy Hoag. This is actually one of, I don't. I don't know why I haven't read any more of Tabby Hoag's, but um, this is probably, I absolutely love this series. It takes place in this little town in, I think it's Southern California, I don't know, some part of California called Oak Knoll, and it's set in the 80s before they really got the technology for like DNA testing and fingerprinting and all that, um, and it's kind of the start of forensic psychology, where they um, do profiling. And so... There's all these murders happening in this little town, of course, shaking up the entire town. And <clears throat> one of the FBI's like profilers goes down there at the request of one of the dep deputies, but more as a... He's not technically on duty when he goes down. He's just helping out. Well, what's really interesting is it is split between the perspective of these four kids... Um, who found the first body and their teacher. And what is really interesting to me is how Tammy was able to show how this event affects um, not only these kids but their families and how this one event can also show the cracks. So everything was perfect up until, of course, this happened, um, which, it, I mean, it wasn't, but that was the facade everyone put on and so you see all the cracks that are happening and how this event plus their kids homes lives affects these kids differently and it's just it's a really interesting look into psychology in and of itself um but the mystery is really interesting and it's really well written it's kind of got a slow ambling pace to it which i actually really enjoy um there's three in the series the best the first one is definitely the best but i do really enjoy the second one as well and I would highly recommend them. Now to get to the books that I didn't reread, that are new to me. So the first book I read this month besides the rereads was, I'll just put the picture up, um, Running with Wolves by Julianne Winters. Um, this is one of the books that was actually in my TBR. And it was described to me by Andriana over Perpetual Pages as queer sports anime basically. I mean it's a book, it's a novel so it's not really the anime part but I mean it has the same feelings and that's all I needed to know and it was everything I wanted it to be and more because the main character is, I believe the main character is bi and one of his best friends is gay and so there's just like a lot of good rep the coach has and the coach is really awesome besides being one of those stereotypical like TV coaches um, he has this rule that your sexuality doesn't matter on the field. Like, he could care less. Um, it's just very supportive, and he wants it to be no bullying, no harassment, no matter your sexuality or your skin color. Um, there's also a lot of different ethnicities or um, for that as well. But it's based around this character, Sebastian, and it's his senior year. Um, and they're going to the soccer camp, and it's about him finding out that one of his childhood friend, um, Emir, is also attending that camp, um, which kind of shakes Sebastian's whole world because Emir and him haven't been friends for many years. And so it's kind of about them reconnecting and him, Sebastian, teaching Emir how to play soccer. And it's just, it's a really fun read. It's really enjoyable. It does deal with some heavier issues. Um, one of the characters does have a bit, uh, um, quite a few body issues, um, really unhealthy ones. And so Julian deals with that really well, the author. Um, I found that really hard. I myself 
have body issues being a plus size person and so that really hit home to me so if that is something you should do be warned it was very I wasn't prepared for how like emotional it would make me but it was really entertaining um, I think I gave it like three and a half stars it was just so light and fluffy and everything I wanted so the next book I read was um, a continuation of Openly Straight by Bill Konigsberg. The, it was Honestly Ben by Bill Konigsberg. It's the second one in the Openly Straight series. I don't know if that's what it's called. Um, but instead of following Rafe, like the first one did, it follows Honestly... It, <laughs> it follows Ben, um, who became friends with Rafe in the first book. And it really just follows kind of the aftermath of the first book, um, but from Ben's perspective. And I found Honestly Ben a bit more attainable I can't, um, and a bit more relatable as I found him um, a bit more relatable as a character because Rafe really does come from privilege I mean he lives in Colorado and he just up and decides to go to a private school in Massachusetts Massachusetts halfway across the country and his parents it's never an issue that they can afford it where Ben is at the school because of a scholarship um, and so he has that pressure to always kind of be up and performing and doing well um, and it, it continues the conversation that Openly Straight started about labels, what they do for people and against people, both negatively and positively. And, um, but I just thought that Ben's struggles were a bit more relatable, a bit relatable as someone who is also working class and does have to kind of struggle for things. Um, I mean, I had to work all through college. But I will be having a review of both of them because I did a, uh, the dual, did a dual review of them together at the same time coming up soon, hopefully, when I have free time to actually edit these videos. So we'll see. I probably gave that one, um, I think I actually rated that one. It was like a 3.75. It was just slightly higher than Openly Straight, which was a 3.5. And, um, and then I, the next book I read was... For my book club, it was The Utterly Uninteresting and Unadventurous Tales of Fred the Vampire. Now, I don't know about you, but that title definitely caught my interest, and it is as entertaining as you would expect it to be. Um, it's kind of mostly a collection, it feels like a collection of short stories based around Fred, who is turned into a vampire. And it's just about his, at least the first book is about his kind of introduction into the paranormal world um but kind of how he deals with it which is like for him it was like no big deal like he got turned he started his own business and then he just did all his work at night so it doesn't really change until someone from um, an old friend from high school crystal comes back into his life and kind of starts introducing him to all these different people um and she is crystal is a part of what's called the agency that's all it's called um kind of like the paranormal government like big bad um she's a part of that but she starts kind of getting him into a little bit of trouble and stuff like that and it's just the characters in it are all awesome and it's just as entertaining as you'd expect it to be I gave that one a four out of five stars next I actually finished um let's talk about love which was on my June TBR, but I didn't get around to finishing, um, and I did finally finish it last month. I really enjoyed it. Um, it wasn't as much as my favorite as it has been some queer booktubers, but that's not to say it's a bad book by any means. It follows, um, it is told from the perspective of Alice, who um, is an asexual biromantic. So that was definitely really interesting to me as I identify as asexual as well. Um, my biggest issue with the book was not anything like with the writing or anything or even the character it was just like if Alice as Alice as a person me and her would not get along <laughs> so it was really hard for me to read the book and get really into it because me and Alice have very different personalities and that was the biggest issue um, I definitely really liked the asexual representation it felt very true to me um, do be warned if you are asexual or if you have trouble with just any kind of phobic language. There is a little bit in the beginning when um, Allison's girlfriend br is breaking up with her. And Alice does mention it a little bit as time goes on. Um, her friend 
Feeny. There are moments where it seems like she might be trying to fix Alice. Um, and but other than that, for the most part, it is really good. It's, it's pretty entertaining. Alice as a character is... Um, and all the characters are pretty full-fledged. They don't feel like stereotypes. Maybe besides Feeny, because she is kind of characterized as a bitch, and that's all you kind of know her as. I think Feeny might have been one of my also hardest reasons that I didn't like the book as much as everyone else. Um, I just felt like a lot of the times when Feeny was very interested in Alice's romantic life that she was trying to fix her, because she would say things like, well, maybe with this one you'll want to, and stuff like that. Um, and so it just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I gave that one three out of five stars. The next one I read was All Kinds of Tied Down by Mary Calms. This is also a queer mystery. I don't know if mystery is quite white. There isn't really a big overarching mystery in the book so much. Um, but it follows these two federal marshals who are partners. Um, and one of the marshals is kind of like what you would stereotypical see in TVs where it's like he's the reckless, doesn't really follow the rules, always barging in. And his partner is the more steady of the two, level-headed, um, always telling him to wait for backup. That type of thing. Well, this um, level-headed partner has started to feel like he has feelings for the more reckless partner. And um, it's just about them kind of falling for each other while dealing with this case while they're trying to protect one of their federal witnesses. It is really enjoyable. I did really enjoy it. Um, although now that I'm recounting it, it's a bit more forgettable than I thought it would be. Um, so I, I don't know what I originally gave it, but I'll probably give it a three. It was really entertaining, but it, it was just a good, feel-good, fun, action-y book. The next book I read was Murder at the Paisley Parrot by Mark McNeese. Um, this one was pretty fun. It was told in a really kind of interesting style. It was told, so I don't know if we ever learn, oh, we probably do, the main character's name, but, um, it's told from him recounting his past. So in the beginning of the book, he's 58. We found that he has survived lung cancer by two years um, when he was just giving a six months diagnosis. And so he's decided to talk about kind of his youth a bit and the murders he was involved in. Although involved is a wrong word. Um, he was just there as they were happening. And, it's, and he works at the Paisley Parrot, which is a gay bar. I kind of enjoyed this. It was, it felt like kind of slightly disconnected. Like the murders and the rest of the book, they didn't really impact each other too much. And so that wasn't the greatest. And I, it was kind of told in that like, well, obviously it's being told to us by someone. Um, so we're like some people foreshadow where it'd be like, well, that he would, he would do that as well, but he would also, instead of like foreshadowing, so it would make you curious. Um, like if it was like, well, it was the calm before the storm or whatever, like alluding to that it's going to get worse. He would kind of answer the questions you were wondering about. Like if they were looking at a suspect or whatever, it would kind of be like, but it didn't work out. And so like, instead of continuously leading on it, it just kept kind of falling flat. Like every time he would foreshadow. So I, I think I gave that one, um, like a two out of five. I... I enjoyed it fine, but it wasn't all that memorable. It was just very slow and not in a good way. Like, it didn't really build the tension at all. It was just slow. And that foreshadowing didn't really work for me. The next book I read was also for my book club, which was actually for... That's coming up. Um, it's called Fun Home, a tragic comic. It's a graphic novel by Alison Bechdel about kind of her relationship with her father. Well, um, in where I live, they were, one of our colleges was actually putting on the musical of it. So we, as a book club, kind of finished it early so that we could go see the musical, which is, I mean, if you ever, if it's ever in your town or whatever, I would highly recommend. I definitely enjoyed the musical more than I did the book. The book for me was just a little confusing because Allison kind of goes between past, present, um, but not in a way that I can kind of really understand where things take place. If, um, it just was very, 
hard for me to kind of wrap where we were in the story. It's, it was also kind of a harder, heavier read because um, we find out um, pretty early on in the story that her father is gay, um, even though she finds out it pretty late in life. And he is a pretty volatile man. Um, he is pretty ex quick to anger. He has pretty extreme passions. And so um, it deals kind of with some physical and verbal abuse that is that he deals on both his kids and his wife and kind of like that and it but it's about um her finding out her dad's gay and her coming to terms with her own sexuality as a lesbian it is really good i did really enjoy it um probably give it a three out of five but like i said the musical is better and then the last book i listened to i actually didn't think i would finish in the month of july but i did it was the second book in the fred the vampire accountant series it's called undeath and taxes and it's just a continuation of those stories. Um, I don't want to give too much away. They are even more entertaining because we, we're um, the characters are starting to grow a little. And we're finding out more about the different characters. And they're thrust into new adventures. Fred is thrust into some on his own without Crystal. So it's just... They're just really awesome reads. Um, they're set in kind of present day. I forgot to mention that earlier. They are set in like today's time. Um, so if you're thinking of maybe giving fantasy or paranormal a shot, I don't really read a lot of contemporary fantasy, um, but I would highly recommend this one. And that was all of the 13 books I read this month. I am still boggled by the fact that I did that, but until the next video, ta-ta for now.